Hey folks, welcome to another video. It's getting into early summer and the garden is changing a lot from spring to summer. So I wanted to take the chance to do a little garden tour and talk about our approach to growing vegetables here at Wild East. So I'm standing here in the market garden and we started at a relatively small scale this year. We laid out 40 beds, each 50 feet long by 30 inches wide, standardized for all the market gardening equipment that's out there now. And you can see there's some beds still with early crops. There's some onions there, which are mostly for personal use and some beds that are just getting planted. Uh, flipping from their first or maybe even second crop into some summer crops. And our approach to gardening here to get started that we took was the no-till or deep mulch compost system that you may have heard of uh, from other popularized by some other farmers out there. Now to prepare the gardens, what we did was an initial tillage pass over the winter and this was very dense pasture with a lot of perennial grasses and perennial forbs that we thought would be quite pernicious if we didn't knock them back a bit with the first passage of uh, with a tractor tilling it up. After that, we went through and laid down about six inches deep of high quality compost that we bought in and amended it with a bit of cow manure and some pelletized chicken manure for extra fertility, as well as azomite to account for trace minerals. And so far we're really happy with how the veg has been growing in a first season. Anyone who has grown commercial vegetables will tell you the first year can have unique challenges that may go away as you develop your practices and as the soil improves and part of the reason we took this approach of the no dig deep compost system is because we knew we could get started quick and though perhaps have some nutrient issues or pest issues as is typical in any garden that we'd be able to grow a lot of veg high quality veg very quickly right off the bat been really happy with the results of the carrots growing here. This is our early round of carrots and we had fairly good germination across all the carrot plantings so far. Part of what you see here in our layout is a wider bed or sorry rather a wider row in between each block. So we have blocks of 10 beds separated by a five foot path with a three foot path going that direction. And in this path, we planted perennials <clears throat> with the hopes of establishing a perennial hedgerow that runs in between each block of 10. So we planted native flowering and fruiting shrubs that will fill in and create microclimates, habitat, windbreaks. And it's our plan on all the gardens we establish to do it on this pattern where we have 10 beds and then a hedgerow. Now we're working in tight spaces because how small our garden is. And we've been experimenting a lot with interplanting, some successful so far and some that we're still learning. So in here you see we planted basil very densely. And as it's been growing up, we planted okra in between. Now we'll see if the okra can keep up with the basil. We planted the okra perhaps a bit later than we should have. And we actually, you can see there's a little remnant on either side of the okra, rather on either side of the basil in this bed, we planted a little row of radishes. So while we're just getting into harvesting the basil, we've already gotten a harvest of radish. And the hope is that the okra 
will come up and continue to be a crop throughout the summer so that we can cut out the basil when it's done and then plant direct seed or perhaps transplant some lettuce or something like that where the basil currently is. If you watch the no-till growers channel, Jesse talks a lot about relay cropping where you have multiple crops that are on different timings in the same bed where you can pull one out while the other's still growing and replace the one you pulled out with a new crop and kind of keep a cycle like that going all the time. So we've been experimenting with that a bit in our brassica patch as well. So in here, we had our spring kale. And while it was a bit smaller than this, we planted cucumbers and trellised them up in between the kale. And we've been picking the kale hard enough to allow enough sunlight for the cukes to grow up. Similar idea on this side with tomatoes and a bit of tomatillos. And at a slightly later stage, you'll see over here where we had our cabbages in these two beds this spring were densely planted with green cabbage. And what we did was planted just a pepper in this bed, a tomato in this bed, in the middle of a grid of four cabbages. So if there was cabbage, 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 we planted the seed right in the center there. And it worked out really well, we're really happy. We got an excellent crop of cabbage and <clears throat> didn't have to wait for it to be out to plant these. Now in here, we're still gonna see if there's enough sunlight with how big these plants are getting, but experimenting with different little direct seeded crops on the side. I direct seeded some basil here, some, some radishes on this side that are doing pretty good. <coughs> and just a note on brassicas in general, it's been a relatively cool spring for our climate and the collards and the kale have just been going completely bonkers. It's late June now and they don't really so show any sign of slowing down. So we're just gonna keep riding this spring brassica wave as long as we can. So one of the challenges that we're facing this year in the first year of this garden is there's some drainage issues. And I think laying down the thick compost helps with that a bit because even when the subsoil is really saturated, it takes a lot for it to saturate the growing medium that the plants are in. But we did have an instance last week where it rained really profusely for about four days in a row. And you could really tell the spots in the garden where the drainage was worse than others. Now we're correcting this over time by broad forking at each bed flip, which we expect to help quite a bit over the first few years. But this bed is a perfect example. Where you see the beets here just look terrific. And this is what they we're all looking like before the rain. Whereas here, there's a little pocket of more poorly draining soil. So this is the same bed and just a few really feet apart from one another. This is where in the worst of the rain, there's a bit of standing water. And I'm hoping these beets will recover, but you know, once we continue to correct the problem, with broad forking and making those adjustments. Hopefully this won't be an issue for the long term. Now this method of gardening with the thick compost is known to not only be effective to get started quickly and cheaply, but also as a really good method to minimize weeds. And that's a question that a lot of folks get is how do you manage weeds on the garden? We have had some weeds. They've all been perennial weeds, mostly grasses and forbs just poking up through the compost, but it really hasn't been much of an issue. I spend maybe about an hour every 10 days or so weeding this space, and that's sufficient to keep it virtually weed-free. We have had some issues with Bermuda grass creeping in, but those are just some of the things you learn in the first year of gardening in a new place. And, you know, it's nothing to get too worried about or fret about, it's just little adjustments you can make, both in an existing garden as well as 
when you're establishing new gardens in the future. So I think what we would have done differently is particularly around the edges, done a layer of cardboard underneath the compost as a weed barrier. We just didn't do that because of access to cardboard and the additional labor. It was just my wife and I who laid out all these beds back in February. So we were kind of making that calculation of how much effort do we want to put in. So we have plans to expand the gardens for next season. And in this case, we're working on a more favorable timeline than with the first gardens we laid out. We just moved here at the end of November and laid out the gardens for this season throughout the winter. Whereas I believe it's more favorable to do a tarpage for a bit of time over the previous summer to really kill weeds. Ideally, a round of cover cropping of some kind to get a lot of living roots and sugars pumping into the soil, as well as adding some biomass, which we've done here. So you can see a bit behind me, that's some cover crop uh, buckwheat that went to seed. And where I tarped, I scythed it down before it had gone to seed and tarped it. So underneath the tarp, there's a ton of biomass that's breaking down. And that in conjunction with tarping for five months and establishing the gardens this fall, I think will really improve the fertility of the first season in here, as well as the weed pressure. It's our plan in here to establish these beds sometime in September and put caterpillar tunnels over them to allow for fall, winter, and spring growing. So while we're having fun in this year in the summer garden and it's returned its investment already just in the first several weeks of producing and selling, we're already changing our strategy for the coming years. We want to put summer vegetable production to rest and really be able to focus on the animal enterprises and crank up the vegetable production during the other three seasons. We live in a very mild climate in the shoulder seasons as well as the winter. And with a bit of protection from tunnels and greenhouses, we are planning to just produce vegetables in those other seasons. And part of the reason for that is in our context, the summer vegetable market is very saturated. And a lot of the awesome local organic growers they dial it back a bit in the shoulder seasons in the winter. So there's market availability for us to sell vegetables in those other seasons, whereas it's more of a challenge in the summer. We also feel in our experience, like it's just more enjoyable growing in those other seasons. The pest pressure is lower, the weed pressure is lower, the disease pressure is lower. It's not as hot working in the garden during that time. And whereas sometimes summer vegetable production can feel like a bit of a slog, I find it extremely therapeutic to spend time in a high tunnel greenhouse in the middle of winter or late fall when the environment around us is all brown and gray. You can kind of retreat into this beautiful space where there's so much green. So there's a lot of reasons for that uh, change of approach. And we're excited to move forward with that plan and just focus on personal garden production during the summer months. We really love growing heirloom varieties of storage crops, corn and paste tomatoes and different kinds of hot peppers that just don't make sense in a commercial context at our scale. So that's the plan for next year and hopefully beyond is to just do a summer garden for ourselves and cr crank up the production of vegetable for market during fall, winter, and spring. I don't mind a bit of chaos on the marginal spaces of the garden. In here, we planted strawberries and asparagus, as well as mix of flowers. There's some celosia and some borage that's just coming out of flower but this strip on the end of the garden has been a beautiful, colorful, pollinator, abundant, and yielding space 
that isn't part of production, but it's what we like to call one of the fun zones of the farm. The infamous Market Gardener's tool board. So this is the extent of the tools that we have had to use since establishing the beds. We, in between crops, will rake out the previous crop or perhaps cut it out, leaving the roots in the ground, do a pass with the broad fork, rake the bed flat, and then use the bed roller to get a good seed bed. We have a Jang seeder single row, which has been very effective for all of our direct seeded crops. And in the case where there's crops with a lot of debris left that it's inefficient or impossible to cut out, arugula is a good example where you cut off all the leaves and there's still a ton of matter. You can't really plant or at least direct seed into that. We've cut these silage tarps to two bed widths plus a path. So one like this is folded in half, but it's wide enough that if we wanted to, we could tarp two beds next to each other at a time. And I just laid this down yesterday and in about a week's time, all of that crop will be totally fried a single pass with the rake and it is essentially a perfect seed bed to close i wanted to just give a little bit on the financial outlook of setting this up to do six inches deep of the 40 beds that we did it took about three thousand dollars worth of compost and that thickness is a one-time input that may have to be repeated every several years but on an annual basis or perhaps in between crops at certain times we're just laying down half an inch to an inch to build on top continue the fertility and have a lower running cost on compost and you know that's an expense that we have to factor in but it's a trade-off we don't have to use any kind of machinery that requires fuel in this garden so when you factor in the cost of maintaining a tractor a bcs all of the gas and oil and time spent working on the machine we really feel like bringing in compost is a better investment in our context and probably comes out pretty similarly over time in terms of cost this garden all the tools all the seeds everything paid for itself in just eight weeks of sales into wholesale markets where we where we weren't even getting uh, farmers market prices on this stuff so the financial outlook is quite good in my opinion obviously different farms have different running costs and, and startup costs but we decided to as much as we could keep it as low cost as possible so that we would be seeing profit as early on as possible in this enterprise and we've been happy with the results so far thanks for watching another video i hope that this was interesting and informative if you like the video please like it and leave a comment i would be curious to hear other people's experience and thoughts not just in this type of market gardening but whatever your experience may be and make sure to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this thanks and i'll see you next time